One of the key things that I found is that there are a lot of very useful tools and processes um, uh, that are, are out there. IFC puts out a lot of really good uh, materials that are there for guidance for companies to use. That there's an overemphasis, I believe, in the case of a lot of companies, particularly extractive companies, on using various kinds of, of methods and tools and processes for working with communities that is very important, but there's not enough of an emphasis on the staff development, on the training needed to, to use those. And in my experience, particularly in working in, in some of the most challenging uh, operating environments that an oil company or mining company could, could operate in, um, it's that it's really the, the, the capacity of the people that makes a difference. I think a lot of people recognize that you can take a good model and if you don't have the right people running it, it's not going to work. But what most people don't realize is you can actually take a bad model, a bad process, and if you find the right people, they will adapt and adopt that model. They will, they will use it as necessary and apply it to make it work because it's that experience, it's that understanding of how to take a tool and relate it to the context that you're operating within, which is very important. And this is the capacity that most of the companies are not investing enough time and, and attention into. They want to document the processes, they want to document the models, and they feel like these are some kind of checklist that they can give to field practitioners and say, okay, go forth and just do this. But the ability to use those tools, the ability to understand when and where they are applicable, uh, the ability to um, to look at a community and understand how that community's relationship with the company uh, can be improved by dialogue processes, by everything. That ability is never going to be just kind of taught through a checklist or through some kind of a manual. It really needs training and development. There needs to be more communities of practice. There needs to be more sharing of information than there, there is now. And that's really something I feel that a lot of companies are missing. It's, my own take on it is that a lot of companies in the extractive industries are, are very technically oriented company. They're very dominated by processes that are focused on technical processes. You know, if you're, if you're a, um, a mechanical engineer and you're working with a mechanical process, once you kind of understand that process, you can rely upon it to work in, in predictable ways. Social processes never work out that way. And so there's an, kind of this, this lack of an understanding that you can't just kind of document how to do something and then just give it to, to anyone to go out and do. There there's needs to be an understanding of the skill sets needed, even the right types of personal qualities and attributes and attitudes that are necessary to work well with communities, to work well with civil society partners and, and others that companies in, engage. And if I think of the, the number one reason why most partnerships fail, at some point. It's usually because there's a replacement of a key person involved in that partnership and they don't have the same commitment and attitudes towards it as their predecessor and everything goes south from there. I think if and when a, a company develops its, its staff, its community relations teams, its uh, uh, partnerships that are working on a corporate social investment to a, a kind of an enlightened level, then they see a lot of things start to change. They start to see the dynamics of the relationships that they have with communities and others changing because the, the, the dialogue kind of elevates to a, a better level. So that's what you would see is better relations, better outcomes from some of these social investments and basically lower social risk for the operations of the companies.